Hi, everyone. I'm Laura. Thanks for the introduction. I'm an artist and a web developer. I'm also a manager at Travis Foundation, where we support and encourage diversity in open source. Um, and I run Rails Girls Summer of Code, which is a global paid scholarship to support non-binary people and women working on open source full time for three months during the summer. Today, I'd like to share my own experiences as a contributor and as a sort of accidental maintainer of open source projects in the hopes that they will inspire you. One quick note and disclaimer, these are my personal experiences. A lot of you here um, today are from marginalized groups and as had, has been said in a few of the last talks, if you feel like any of these situations are unsafe for you, um, leave. So open source is a great place to be, but it's, it can be a difficult place to be too. Quick disclaimer. Uh, before we go on, I want to clarify the term open source. I've got this definition up here from opensource.org um, about open source software software with source code that anyone can inspect, modify, and enhance. It's a rather simplified but clear definition, and I'll be using this throughout my talk. We encounter open source software as users every day. Some of us might use operating systems that are open source. And those of us that are developers may use languages, libraries, tools, that are open source software too. Open source is at the center of the tech industry, even when it's invisible. And I'd like to go a little bit into the reasons why the idea of contributing to open source software might be scary or daunting. Open source software is open. This means that everyone can see and inspect your code. Contributing is a public act and it can lead to a lot of attention. Open source is volunteer work. As you may know, as users of open source software, most of it is free and a lot of companies don't necessarily fund work that goes into it. The trend is changing, but too few of us are actually paid for our efforts. Many of us still contribute outside of work and on weekends, which is, as you might know, a huge problem, especially for members of marginalized groups. Imposter syndrome is real. Imposter syndrome is characterized by self-doubt and a constant fear of being exposed as a fraud. It's fairly common in a lot of industries, but it's especially common in our tech industry. And you might not feel like you're good enough. Here's a thought. You are good enough. Even if you fear judgment, and if you're unsure about your code, if you're just a beginner, or if you don't consider yourself a programmer or not a programmer yet, open source is something that you can contribute to. A few months ago, I attended a conference where the CTO of the publishing platform, Ghost, um, Hannah Wolf, gave a talk about Ghost 1.0. And the one thing that I took away from her talk was this. She said that sometimes contributing to open source is the simple act of telling someone who built something you use, thank you. This really resonated with me. And to me, contributing starts with the statement, saying thank you to maintainers of projects you use and recognizing their value. Open source software is not just code. Behind every software project, there is visible 
and less visible work being done. And open source is really not any different. There's a range of different possibilities when it comes to contributing. Open source is design. It's user experience and user interface. It's marketing and community. Open source is project management. It's testing, translation, and documentation. So if you have any experience in any of these fields, you can become an open source contributor. In the next couple of slides, I'm going to outline some ways to get started. Um, most of the projects that I've worked on are on GitHub, so I'll be using some terms that refer to GitHub specifically. Feeling welcome to a project is going to shape the memory of your first contributing experience. So having a supportive maintainer, especially if you don't feel confident, can make a huge difference. For your first contribution, I suggest to try and find a project with a welcoming community, and that's not always that easy, but some signs of a welcoming community might be a solid or well-written contribution guide, a code of conduct that exists and gets enforced if need be, or generally uh, questions on the issue tracker being answered quickly. I also suggest trying to look for issues that don't necessarily require that much expertise. Your first contribution doesn't have to be significant. It can be a typo fix or an improvement to the documentation. What matters at the beginning is just that you get acquainted with the process. Little steps. GitHub uh, gives you the possibility to label tasks and issues with whatever the maintainer is like. And some of them have been using the labels to show issues and tasks that are beginner or newcomer friendly. Labels such as first timers only, quick fix, help wanted, or beginner friendly. You might want to look for those. On October 28th, uh, 2013, I made my very first pull request on GitHub. The project was called Hello Worlds, and it was a collection of very simple Hello Worlds um, programs in various languages. In itself, the project is not particularly important or significant, but it gives an overview of just syntax of different projects, um, of different languages, sorry. And at the time, I was following an online course in music programming, and I was learning the basics of um, what it turns out is a very obscure language called Chuck, <laughs> which is a statically typed C-like language to program music. I was just finding out about functions, and contributing gave me the possibility to understand this new language I was learning and to make a contribution with it at the same time. And you might be thinking, okay, so, I've made my first contribution. I don't want to fix typos on the internet for the rest of my life as a contributor. And so that's when the search for your first significant project starts. For me, it happened almost accidentally. In summer 2014, I helped out on the scholarship program that I mentioned before, Rails Girls Summer of Code. And what happened was that I was helping out at first as a volunteer um, on the side um, on weekends and at night on the next to my web developer job. And at some point, I realized that this was happening. Um, this is just a list of commits that I'd been doing um, in March. Yeah, so I started getting way more involved in our two open source projects. There were bugs to fix, tweaks to be made on the site, features to be added, and I just found myself like merging pull requests and looking at them 
and doing this regularly. So my point is sometimes you're not going to find a project to work on, it's going to find you. A common piece of advice that you get from people when you ask about contributing to open source for the first time is contribute to tools or projects you use. It's a great idea in theory because it takes into account that you know the project well, that you know it as a user and you understand its value, but it can be an issue if it has a huge code base or if it's written in a language that you don't know. So your experience might be useful, but not always. Um, if you get this advice and it doesn't work for you, move on to the next one, which is this. Um, look for projects that can use your skills or knowledge. If you have specialized skills, you can ask in your community for projects that might need you. And again, um, I'm talking about your local community or specifically about communities online that you feel comfortable in so that you might get tips that work for you and for the kind of person that you are. You might want to specify what you'd like to work on, like design, translation, copy editing, or code. Um, I recently tweeted something like that. Um, I said, I'd like to get more involved in contributing meaningfully to an open source project or an initiative that makes a difference and asked for suggestions. I received a few responses and Twitter, again, works very well for me. Um, the people who replied were incredibly open and said, look, contribute to our project, we can help. My point is that if you reach out, people will answer. Choosing which project to contribute to is like deciding which organization you want to do volunteer work for. The principle behind it is the same. You're investing your time and effort to improve an initiative that relies on the work of volunteers like you. And because your time and effort are limited, these are the questions that you should be asking yourself. Is the project important to me? If you volunteered before, you'll have done so for an organization that means something to you. And it should give you that same feeling. You have to care about it. Does my work make a difference? Can I feel productive while working on the project? You want to try and make sure that the work you do goes towards a specific goal and is important for the general success of the project. <coughs> I've talked about community before. Do I like the community? Do I feel welcome? Community is incredibly important and we're all here today because we support and love the community um, that AlterConf is. If you're going to be contributing regularly, you should feel at ease. Having great co-contributors in volunteer work is more important than great co-workers because they're the people you actually choose to spend your time with. Is there work available for me to do? This last one basically just means that some projects might have issues to work on, but they're not specifically issues that you can do. And that's okay. Um, just keep the project on your radar, but keep looking. There's a ton of projects out there that will need your help. Once you've picked your project, it's time to start selecting and working on an issue. Again, I'd suggest to join the community and see a little bit how the project works behind the scenes. The issue tracker of the project is a very good place to start. You want to try and look at open issues and see if anything sparks your interest. Projects on GitHub um, have a file called contributing.md for markdown. And it's basically just a file with contribution guidelines. It's very, very important and very helpful for new contributors. So 
um, on there, you'll have a little bit of an idea of how to file a bug and how to make a feature request according to the specific guidelines of the project. I recently wanted to contribute to an open source project and realized the contribution guidelines have some stuff missing. So what I did is I contributed by contributing contribution guidelines. Uh, and um, it was great because I just made a list of all the things I thought were missing. And they said, great, add those, we'd love you to. Um, so I made my pull request, it was reviewed, it was merged a few days later, and then it was even ported to two other projects that that same maintainer maintains. So it's nice to kind of see how this expands. Yeah. If you've ever been a beginner at anything, you know that it's incredibly hard to ask questions. Don't hesitate to ask questions. You may need clarifications on the issue you're working on. You might be stuck or need help. And if the documentation doesn't help, write in the Slack channel, in IRC, write on the mailing list, on the issue tracker. Ask for help or ask questions. Be respectful of other people's time. Understand that reviewing code and other things that are in code can take a while and that you might have to wait a few days. Don't do any work you don't want to do. Remember that this is your free time and that you're volunteering it because writing code or documentation or creating a great user experience is something that you love. Go for the work that you're interested in doing. Just because it's volunteer work doesn't mean that it has to be terrible. Last but not least, start your own project. If there's a problem you're trying to solve or a tool you want to build, open sourcing it may be the best way to become a part of the open source community. This will give you the possibility to showcase your work and to help people get started. In summary, open source isn't just code. Community is everything. Be respectful and patient and do work you want to do. Open source contributions come in many shapes and forms. You can get started by reporting bugs, fixing the documentation, or choose to work on a bigger project by offering your specialized skills. Ultimately, all the points I outlined have one thing in common, people. Software is as much about people as it is about code. It's important to see and value this. And I want you to remember that open source is built on community and on creating things together. As soon as you start creating in public, you become part of this community. I'd like to leave you with a quote by Nadia Ekbal who has done some really interesting work and research in the sustainability of open source software. Today, more people use open source, but fewer people contribute back than ever before. And everybody assumes that somebody else is doing it. Thank you.